Let somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, let's come with that passage is that God is always in us. His name is Emmanuel, Matthew chapter 1, verse 23, that he will always be with the lonely. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes, ma'am. I am going to have the opportunity of going through the open level state. And the teaching and that open level, we are going through of how David was alone in the wilderness. That uh, God gave him the opportunity of what he became, because he was there, he could study, he could do so many things. Then I, that one reminded me in the book of First Timothy, chapter 2, verse 15. You know, the time of our loneliness, we can do it for so many things to achieve. With the time of our loneliness, we can do so many things to achieve, to develop ourselves, as David had done. And he said in that passage that study to show yourself approved, a work one that needed to be approved to need that not to be ashamed. You know, it is what we study outside that will make us to be approved. It will what we study inside that will make us to be approved outside. So the confidence would have gained the confidence of stand tall when we get outside. So time of loneliness. We can use it to develop ourselves. For example. Okay. Yes. Boys. Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. From this passage, we are made to know that as, a, as children of God, we should make everything in our relationship, in the way we relate with people, in the way we talk, and whatever we do. It should be as if we are doing it with God. There shouldn't be a, 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 a selfish interest. And we shouldn't be looking as if we want everything that comes our way. Because we should have no fear. For our God said, it will always be with us. And that should give us the boldness and without fear to know that whatever may be our need, whatever may be our problem, whatever we may be passing through, we should be rest assured that once we are with the Lord, nothing can shake us, nothing can move us because our fear is not with man. Our fear should only be the fear of God and the fear with reference, not the fear as if we are afraid of our enemy. So we have to believe in what we believe only God can do for us and not what man can do for us so that we will not be looking for what the necessary the people of the world will be looking for to acquire, to acquire and and be thinking that that's what God wants for them. Praise the Lord. Okay. okay. Yes. All right. Praise, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'll just quickly just bring out two major things. Um, if you look at verse 5, it says, Keep your life free from the love of money and be content with what you have. I'll link this passage to Matthew 6 33, which says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and every other thing will be added to you. So when it comes to money, love, money, material things, I feel the best way we ought to get this is to seek God first. And secondly, in verse 6, that the initial passage, so we say with confidence. It is only a man who has absolute trust in God that can say that I make this statement in confidence. So two things. One, we should seek first the kingdom of God and we'll get other things. And secondly, we need to trust totally in God for us to be able to say, the Lord is my helper. Praise the Lord. One more, sister. Praise the Lord. In verse 5, it says, let your conversation be with that covetousness. Covetousness is an attitude of excessive greed, love for money. And as Christians, we should desist from it. Let us be content with whatever we have. Contentment and godliness, the Bible says to us, is great gain. Why? For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. If our Father, the creator of the whole earth, has promised that 
He will not leave us. He will not forsake us. Surely he will not leave us. He will not forsake us. Therefore, we should hold on to him and trust him. And um, we will be free from the flare and spirit of covetousness. Okay, thank you very much. So we will take uh, and study me again on <coughs> Um, one of the things I learned from um, this past, uh, verse 5, it says, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. And I discovered in the life of Abraham when God called him, God told him, Sebra, I will. In the Bible, I discovered that any time God says, I will, he always does. So if he says, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee, it means for every child of God, we can rest assured that it doesn't matter in whatever situation we find ourselves, he will be with us. He manifested that in the life of Daniel, life of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I will means he will. Satisfies. It doesn't matter how much you have, you want more. When you have a Mercedes S class and you are rejoicing, the day you see someone with a Rolls Royce, your hunger for more will be kindled. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 from verse 10 to 12. Ecclesiastes 5, 10 to 12, make it clear. You love silver, you will not be satisfied with silver. You love money, or you will not want abundance, you will discover you will not be satisfied. Because at the end of the day, the Bible says when the money you have Increases, those who will eat it will increase. And all you get out of having this much is that you just see it with your eyes. And went further to say that the people you call poor are enjoying, many a times, enjoy more than the people you call rich because nothing bothers their sleep. But the abundance of the rich, many a times, will not even allow them to sleep. We can go further there and 
you will discover that a lot of rich people even have problems eating because they have so much to choose from. At the end of the day, deciding what to eat becomes a problem. Whereas those of us who are not that rich, we just thank God for whatever is available. We eat it with joy and with gratitude. And the, another reason why money won't satisfy you, why you won't be content if you are looking at wealth, is the fear that the little you think you have will fly away. Mm -hmm. Proverbs 23 verse 5, Proverbs 23 verse 5 says, Riches can develop wings and fly away. The reason people are amassing wealth is when you hear the story of corruption, particularly in our nation, you are bound to ask, what do they want to do? with all this money they are stealing. Many of them are living in fear that what they have can disappear. Not that I blame them. We have seen a lot of people who you could now call ex-rich. They used to be wealthy. A change of government will mean that you lose many of the houses you built corruptly. And in losing those you acquired corruptly, you might even lose those you acquired legitimately. Why should you be content with whatever you have? First Timothy chapter 6, verse 6 to 7. First Timothy chapter 6 from verse 6 to 7 says, Godliness with contentment is great gain. And he explained it further. He said, if you have food to eat, clothes to wear, you should be content with that. Except for that because we brought nothing into the world. We will take nothing out. We heard of several situations in Lagos of people that were buried uh, with all manners of uh, tre treasures only for relatives to come back a week or so later for one thing or the other and find that the grave had been opened. <laughs> but you think you can take it away, you're wasting your time. I remember the story of a chief in town. In one time I won't mention the name of the town, but you never can tell where this uh, message is reaching. He was extremely rich and extremely miserly. So miserly that he would go to the market himself, <laughs> buy the food, give to the wife to, to, to prepare. And when the wife has prepared his own particular pot of soup, he would take it to his bedroom. <laughs> he had a room that nobody ever entered where he kept his money. Then he died. And all the children came from all over the world. At least he did one good thing. He sent his children to school. And when they came, they couldn't find the key to that, to that room. And they knew. Because he never took his money to the bank. He didn't trust the bank. <laughs> And one of the children said, this old rascal, 
they might have swallowed the key. <laughs> True story. <laughs> so they took his corpse, put his head down, and began to slap his back. And believe it or not, out of his mouth jumped in. <laughs> you brought nothing to the world. You are not taking anything out. So why don't you just relax? And then he said, be content with what you have. Maybe what you have will have been who you have. Because he said in the text we read, the Lord himself said, I will never leave you, I will never forsake you. Who do you have? You have a permanent friend. Who is the all-sufficient one? Genesis 17 verse 1. Genesis 17 verse 1. You have the God who is more than enough. The one who will give you whatever help you need when you need it. Psalm 46 verse 1. Psalm 46 verse 1 calls him the ever-present help in trouble. That is, any time you need something, he provides. There are many sicknesses and diseases in the world today that were not there in the days of our forefathers. And you know what? They had no freezers. They don't keep anything till next month. When they are ready to eat, they go and get what they need fresh from the farm. At the point when they needed something, that's when they go to get it. Now we have more than we can cope with. And the Almighty God made it clear. Take no thought of tomorrow. Let tomorrow take care of itself. Why? It's not your wisdom that provided for you up to today. And the one provided for you up to today is going to be alive tomorrow, to provide for you tomorrow. That's why when the Lord was teaching the disciples to pray, to, to pray in Matthew chapter 6, from verse 9, and he said, give us this day our daily bread, not our weekly bread. One young man came to me years ago and said, Daddy, I want to know how to live holy. Teach me. I've watched you. I know by the grace of God you have been. You must have discovered a secret. What exactly the secret? I said, it's simple. Every morning when I wake up, Lord, don't let me offend you today. I don't, I don't say don't let me offend you this month. A day at a time. I said, do you believe you can be holy for one day? He said, oh, one day is not a difficult problem. If he can keep you for one day. They can keep you today, they can keep you tomorrow. Okay? Just one day at a time. Now the interesting thing about contentment is that it is something you can learn. Philippians chapter 4, from verse 11 to 12. Philippians 4, 11 to 12. Paul said, I have learned to be content. It is something you can learn. And your learning can begin right now. In other words, 
Maybe everybody needs to learn to be content. Paul said, I've learned to be content. When I have plenty, I enjoy the plenty. When there isn't much, mm, I have no problem. Probably he's saying, I know no situation is permanent. If plenty comes today, Glory be to God. But then every day is not Christmas. Every day is not a feast. All I need anyway is what is sufficient for me today. You eat more than you should in one day. You pay for it the following day. Oh, you are having a celebration. And so there's plenty to eat, plenty to drink. If you are not careful, tomorrow you will spend quite a lot, a lot of time in the toilet. Learn to be content. That is the point. It will require a prayer. And the prayer will be, Lord, teach me to be content. The moment you learn contentment, oh, you begin to enjoy the peace of God that passes all understanding. Because once you are content, you don't worry about tomorrow. Once you are content, nobody can tempt you to steal. Once you are content, nobody will tempt you to falsify records. And once you have not stolen, you have not falsified record, they, you then suddenly discover there is nothing any man can do to you. The only people who are afraid of auditors are thieves. <laughs> if I have not stolen anything, if I have not done anything fraudulently, and they say an inquiry is coming, oh, glory be to God, let them come. It is when you are not content, and lack of contentment has led to something that you shouldn't have done, but suddenly you become afraid of man. Because Jesus Christ said, the prince of this world cometh unto me and has nothing in me. So we we'll go to the Lord this morning and cry to him. Lord, teach me to be content.
In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Heavenly Father, once again, we are saying good morning to you. Thank you so, so much for watching over us while we slept. Thank you, Lord God Almighty, for keeping us alive up to today. Thank you for putting the enemy to shame over each and every one of us. Thank you for taking care of your church. Thank you for the mercy you have shown to Nigeria. Please accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Eternal Rock of Ages, we pray, like never before, Lord, teach us to be content. Amen. That's very special grace that we not worry about tomorrow. That special grace, Lord, that will keep remembering that our God is more than sufficient. That our God is the ever-present help in the time of trouble. Give it to us today in Jesus' name. Amen. For the rest of our lives, Lord God Almighty, with contentment, help us to live a life of absolute transparency in Jesus' name. Amen. So that from this day onward, the fear of man will be gone from us forever in Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. Thank you, my Father and my God. Amen. Let it be well with all of us. Amen. All over the world today, please send help to your children. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. Good morning to you all. Yeah, sure. Song, song, song. 